Community sick. And when were you able to go? Man, May, April and May, I think. How excited are you to be back, back in New York? Oh uh, man, it feels like the world's spinning the right direction again. It's uh, just to see everybody here and uh, you know, New York's like the, the NYRR and the, the people here are like family. Um, they're excited. You know, my kids, my kids are coming out with my wife on Saturday to watch the race, and then we'll all fly back Sunday. And, and to my kids, this New York family is extended family. They're they're just as excited to come to New York, and and so there's so much about being back here that makes it seem like everything's good again. Yeah, in my living room with my kids, uh, I had a uh, you know, long run on Saturday uh, preparing for this race, which was the day in the U.S. that we were watching the men race. And so I'd watched, I'd watched the women race and Molly Seidel finished third on Friday and was so excited that the long run Saturday didn't feel very long as I was so excited to watch the men's race. And, um, and still, I think, feeling an adrenaline high from Molly's race. And so I, I think there was, it was probably a blessing for me that uh, it was 18 months removed from the trials. I was no longer emotionally uh, left off of that team. And uh, so I really, I felt like that extra time cushion uh, set it up so that I could really enjoy those races. And I, I loved it. So yeah, we, uh, yep, in my living room, sitting on the couch with my kids. Oh, sorry, Utah. Yeah, Utah. And my, you know, it's been my goal for five years now to finish on the podium in a major marathon. And so uh, every, every chance I have uh, to run a race like this, uh, that's what I'm, that's what I'm hoping for. Um, you know, and it, it, there's there's fantastic runners here. Uh, the the international field's fantastic. The domestic field is is good, and so it's going to take some things uh, falling my way. But uh, I'm going to approach the race with every intention of putting myself into a position to capitalize on a, a podium vacancy with the last uh, in the last you know five or six miles of the race when we get back into Manhattan. Yeah, I would say, you know, that travel's grueling, um, but, uh, you know, to me, I, I've never been able to bounce back from a marathon quick and, and turn it around into another marathon cycle. And so the, the um, coming back from Sapporo from the Olympics and running this race would be a tight turnaround for me in terms of the timeline. And so, um, but some runners handle it really well and certainly footwear is in a different spot than it was a decade ago. It makes that a little bit easier, but that would be a tough turnaround for me. Um, but, but again, there's a lot of people that can do it. And so I, I don't think I count any of those runners out, you know, they, they were in Sapporo, so they're good. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, it'll be, you know, just an opportunity to be racing against them. Yeah. Speaking of footwear, what shoe are you, are you wearing? Pro Plus. That's like the standard one, or do you, so have, a, do this, you have a special one? This one, well, I guess it's a, it was released, uh, a special edition release a few months ago. It was the one that I ran in Germany in at the Saucony event out there, and it's a lighter version of the Pro. Yeah, because there's been all these, you know, studies on shoes. Do you feel like the Saucony shoes are as good now as... Everybody else? Yeah, I'm pretty happy with them. I mean, I, and I guess, you know, I've been fortunate to be involved in the process of, of kind of developing and giving feedback. But I think because of that, I, I got a shoe that was somewhat catered to me. You know, we, I try out a handful of shoes and I say, oh, I perform the best in this one. And they take that one and break it apart. And, and so I feel like I got, got to have my hands in that process a little bit. And I'm very happy with the, the shoes that I have. And how would you, your fitness build up how, how things have gone for this good you know i've been i've been very healthy i would say i mean i had a little calf flare up uh, a few weeks ago um but no big um 
no big injuries or, or things that I've had to push through. And so I've been a little bit more patient. I'm, you know, I'm trying to trying to be patient and uh, and build gradually. Um, so there's been stuff in this training cycle that I've been very excited about. So a few key workouts that I've been excited about. Um, my volume's been uh, higher than it was for the last couple marathons. Not everything's gone perfect, but uh, but I think I've been pretty well rested, maybe more rested this last week and a half or two or three weeks. And so so I'm excited to see what a little bit more taper does. And the, the last couple ones haven't gone that well. Is that a fair assessment? Mm -hmm. What do you think happened there? And do you think this is sort of a pivotal race for you? Yeah, I, I, I do feel to a certain extent it's pivotal. I mean, I, I went into the trials feeling like I was in the best shape of my life and and didn't come out well. And then I ran two more marathons in 2020 where uh, I committed to a marathon sort of last second and didn't get a full build into it. And so I, you know, I don't know what happened um, at the Olympic trials uh, in in London and then at the marathon project. I think it was more of a, a function of me not being able to get a full three or four month build into it and that I, I really need that. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I my head's in a good spot, and I'm I'm grateful to feel like I kind of have my head back. I'm you know I'm not going into this um, expecting to finish somewhere. I'm going into it ready to fight to to finish where I want to finish, and and uh, so my my attitude's a little bit different, and I, and I just hope that my body keeps up. I'm 33 years old, so I you know I'm very much at that that critical you know kind of age for marathoners and some guys last for another decade but this is kind of the beginning of the end for a lot of marathon runners and so i'm trying to be careful and preserve that for as long as i can because i want to keep running for a few more years how do you prepare for running in a field with a guy who's run 201 i mean what do you what's gonna happen <laughs> yeah who knows right? right who knows well here's how you prepare you get excited for the opportunity to race someone who's that you know yeah I mean I, I've been watching Ken and Issa race since I was a kid and um, so it's uh, you know it's an opportunity to share a start line with someone that I've watched for so long and admired and so you know I look at it just as an opportunity and if if Kenanisa goes out and runs 435s for the marathon, then I'm not going to be seeing him for very long in the race. Um, but you know, it still the flip side of that coin is um, if we go out as a pack and you know we're running five flats or 450s for you know through Brooklyn, then what an opportunity for me to um, kind of get into his slipstream and some of these other athletes' slipstream and and run with them. And it, you know, the marathons. Um, there's a there's a lot that can go right in a marathon, and there's a lot that can go wrong. And so I, you know, as a, I guess I'm cursed with a, a stats mind in in some sense. But um, not everybody's going to have a perfect race on the same day. So I, as I look at the list of, of people in this race, I see uh, certainly a handful of international athletes that are really really good, and. Um, I'm not going to go out and beat them on a really, really good day, but not everyone has really, really good days on the on the same day. And so, you know, I, just, I want to do everything I can to put myself in a position with some of these really incredible runners so that I can capitalize on a podium vacancy, vacancy in the last, uh, you know, three or four or five miles when we get back into Manhattan if one happens, if one opens up. Maybe there's too many things, you know, there's so many things that I like doing. I, I like teaching statistics and I didn't, I didn't teach this fall. We, we had our, uh, a new baby last uh, April and, and I just thought I needed to be home a little bit more. And so, um, so I'm not doing that. And, uh, and I do like the stuff that I'm doing with Saucony. I, I, I see myself, um, you know, an opportunity in a few different roles in, in that brand. And, but I, I don't know what's next, you know, right now, right now, um, I was reminded over these last couple of years, how much I hope that I can be a runner still for a few more years. And I spent so long trying to set up everything that was going to maybe come next in my life after running, keep all these doors open because I'm not going to be able to retire off of, uh, off of my winnings as a runner. Um, and now I've realized that what I want to do is preserve this phase of my life 
and run now and kind of worry about that stuff down the line. And so uh, just excited to still be in this field and be competing and be excited about a race. How many kids do you have? Five now. Wow. It's like a little mini herd. And yeah. my wife is herding all five of them onto an airplane on Saturday and By herself? flying out here. Just her. Wow. Yeah, she's what, a champ. What are the, what's the key? What's the key? Yeah, marry an impressive person. <laughs> and I'm not the impressive person. <laughs> Touche. You know, this is, I, you know, when I think of the New York City Marathon, I think of the closest you can get to running a race that's like racing in the Olympics. And it's, you know, it's, a, it's the tour of the five boroughs. It's the, the cultural and uh, ethnical diversity and the melting pot that's here. It, it, the, both, both the city and what it embraces and the people that the city brings for this race from all over the world. And I just feel, I don't know, the, the coolest thing about running in the Olympics to me was the just recognizing that all of these athletes were from all over the world and we're all different in so many ways but in this one way we're the same we're all here to compete and we've trained really hard and we're here to do our best and it was uniting um in a way that nothing else seemed to matter you know the the political differences or anything else didn't seem to matter and i feel that in new york i feel that kind of coming togetherness and that embracing that hey we're closing down the streets because we're all runners and we want to run or celebrate the running that's happening here and you get a certain sense of that everywhere in the world when you run a marathon or when you have a race or you know a community or an event that brings people together but i don't think it happens anywhere quite like it happens in new york